This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1855, Five Ways Your Childhood Impacts Your Relationship, part one, by Alicia Janey of ModernLoveCounseling.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Optimal Relationships Daily, the show that is all about improving your relationships one day at a time through the narration of different articles that are all about relationship building. I'm your host and narrator of said articles, Greg Audino. Now, If you are new here, sometimes the articles are a bit on the longer side, and that is the case this time around. I've got a really important yet lengthy post about how our childhood impacts our relationships. So I'm going to split it between today and tomorrow for you. There's a lot to get through though, so without further ado, let's jump right into part one and start optimizing your life. Five Ways Your Childhood Impacts Your Relationship Part 1 by Alicia Janey of ModernLoveCounseling.com. Maybe you know the ways your childhood impacts your relationships. Maybe you've never thought about it. As an attachment-based therapist, I see the impacts of bonds and relationships. From my perspective, strong bonds are what keep us grounded, feeling confident and secure in ourselves and our world around us. I believe we all need and desire to feel safe and secure. This is what motivates a lot of us. Unfortunately. We get stuck in our not-so-helpful coping strategies that ultimately deny us of this, and we often don't even realize we're doing this, especially in our adult relationships. Do you ever wonder why you do the things that you do? Do you ever look at yourself objectively and ask yourself, what's really going on for me? Well, it may be time to start. Here are five ways your childhood impacts your relationships. Number one, you don't trust easily. Trust is the foundation of any relationship. When we as adults struggle with trusting others, it may be due to deep-rooted issues from past ruptures with the people we were innately supposed to trust. If our parents neglected us, abandoned us, abused us, criticized us, and or created a relationship that was conditional, we don't realize that we innately feel a sense of insecurity as we evolve into our environment and sense of self as we grow. This doesn't mean our parents didn't love us, This doesn't mean you don't love your parents. This may mean that the tools they had weren't always effective. Often our parents did the best that they could with what they had, but that doesn't mean the impact of those tools, or lack thereof, should be dismissed. It had an impact. If our parents or caretakers don't give us the unconditional space to be human, i.e. having emotions, messing up, etc., then we start internalizing emotions, and we start adapting to our insecurities by mistrusting others around us and becoming protective of ourselves in many different ways. What you can do? It's important to understand that trust is difficult for everyone, regardless of their past. If you experienced some form of disconnect with your caretakers and or parents growing up, it's important to acknowledge and give yourself permission to see how it may have grown into a bigger sensitivity for you, and maybe something you struggle with even to this day. Acknowledging this doesn't mean you have to blame your parents for everything. This doesn't mean you don't love them. This doesn't mean that you are betraying them. This does mean that you are acknowledging yourself and your needs as a child, which is extremely validating and okay to do. Number two, you need a lot of reassurance. If we forge an insecure bond with our parents or caretakers in infancy and childhood, whether it's because they were helicopter parents and never allowed us to have any sense of autonomy, or because they were never around us or abused us, we innately develop a sense of insecurity and doubt in ourselves. Maybe we weren't given the reassurance as children that was necessary for us to feel a sense of confidence in ourselves to explore and make mistakes. Maybe we weren't ever acknowledged to begin with. Maybe we were acknowledged, but too much, and everything we did was critiqued or validated in a positive way. If everything we did in our parents' eyes was unseen, seen under a microscope, or seen through rose-colored glasses, we weren't given the space to feel confident in our own achievements, flaws, and mistakes. How does this impact your relationship? Well, to start, you may find yourself really defensive, and it may be because you're feeling insecure. Instead of giving your partner an opportunity to reassure you, you push them away with your defensiveness because you're struggling and you don't know how to soothe or feel comforted. What can you do? Recognize where your need for reassurance comes from. Did you receive too much reassurance as a child, or did you never receive kudos? 
Why might this be a trigger for you? Then practice how to reassure yourself internally. Try to work on being aware of your self-talk when you find yourself feeling insecure. Can you try to work on reassuring and validating yourself in the way that you always needed it? This can be helpful to start practicing and identifying for yourself. It's also extremely empowering when you start putting it into practice. It's also helpful to be able to articulate a need to your partner. Like, I'm feeling scared about this job interview. Can you tell me I'm going to do a great job? Number three. Hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled, Five Ways Your Childhood Impacts Your Relationship, by Alicia Janey of ModernLoveCounseling.com. Keeping your body in shape is important, but it's also important to keep your mind in shape. I've been leveling up my focus with Word Collect, which is a free word puzzle app with over 2,000 levels. Word Collect gets harder as you get better, so it's a fun and challenging way to keep your brain sharp and grow your vocabulary. I highly recommend you give this fun and addicting brain game a try. And right now, WordCollect is offering you 2,500 coins and 500 gems when you download and play. And those coins help. You'll need them when you're having a hard time reaching the next level. I've been there a few times myself, and I am very thankful they made it easier for me to keep going, because it really is a fun and educational game. So, stop mindlessly scrolling through social media. Keep your mind sharp. Just go to the Apple or Google store and search for WordCollect. So if you're like me and want to get fit with your mind and body, download Word Collect for free today. I highly recommend you give this fun and addicting brain game a try. Download Word Collect for free today. If I were to ask you to name a song by Dolly Parton or Queen, could you answer in under 15 seconds? If so, then you need to play Trivia Star. Trivia Star is a free mobile trivia game with over 60 different categories. If you choose the correct answer from multiple choices and beat the clock, you move on to the next level. The questions get harder over time, but if you get stuck, you can use coins and gems to get hints. And right now, Trivia Star is offering you 2,500 coins and 500 gems when you download and play. And above all, I personally love Trivia Star because it's just a really great way of testing yourself and keeping your brain sharp, which of course is what we're all about here in the OLD Network. Download Trivia Star for free today and get ready to flex your brain muscles. Trivia Star has thousands of five-star reviews in the Apple Store and is the number one trivia game on the App Store. Download it today to challenge yourself. Just go to the Apple or Google Store and search for Trivia Star. Download Trivia Star for free today and get ready to flex your brain muscles. Okay, and thanks to Alicia for a great start to this post. Now, if you have listened to this show for a while, you probably know how much I'm enjoying this article (laughs) and how important I feel it is. I'm a big believer in investigating one's own past and learning about where our emotional blueprints come from. I believe this is absolutely critical when looking into the betterment of your relationship with yourself or with anyone else. So, uh, for Alicia to address it so directly is really wonderful to me. And there's a lot more to go in tomorrow's continuation. But what I like that she's doing already are two things in particular. One, and this is pretty on the nose, is that she's providing us not only with information, but with a course of action to follow. So this is the kind of stuff that we can theorize and learn about all we want, but to have a plan for how to manage it and attack it is what we're really after if we want to improve upon these areas of our lives. So I love that. And number two, she's not shying away from how broad these traits are or how broad their origins are. As you're maybe starting to see, they can come from a lot of different places. You know, number two, for example, Maybe we weren't acknowledged enough. Maybe we were acknowledged too much. This can lead to the same type of need for reassurance, even though the treatments in childhood are on different ends of the spectrum. So this stuff is not so cut and dry. And for Alicia to illustrate that to us is really special. And I I hope that this uh, provides you with an open mind about how these tendencies in us start to develop. But that's it for me for today, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in and doing right by your relationships. Again, more coming tomorrow in a post that I think is very helpful. So don't miss out on part two. I hope to see you there, where your optimal life awaits.